In this problem, we're told the flywheel of an engine has a moment of inertia 1.6 kg meters squared about its rotation axis. What constant torque is required to bring it up to an angular speed of 400 revolutions per minute in 8 seconds starting from rest? So notice what we're given in this problem. Let's just write down that first. So what we're given is first off inertia. So we're given the inertia of this, uh, the flywheel of an engine, right? Its moment of inertia is 1.6 uh, kg meters squared. So we're given inertia. And we're also given, or we're solving for torque, right? So they want us to find torque. So we'll say torque equals question mark because that's what we're trying to find. Uh, we're given an angular speed, right? So we're given omega, right? Angular velocity, which is 400 revolutions per minute. And the time is going to be eight seconds, right? So this is in eight seconds. And they also tell us it's going to be starting from rest. So we know omega zero, right? It's just going to be zero radians per second because it starts from rest. So how do we want to solve this? So Notice we have inertia and we're given torque. So the way I think about this, right, is we're given inertia and we want to find torque. So we have we have to somehow relate those variables. And we're given all these variables, right? We're given omega, we're given time, we're given omega zero. So that tells me that uh, what we need to do is relate these variables. So the way we're going to do that is essentially the formula torque equals I alpha. And you'll see why we do this in a second. But essentially, we can solve for torque if we have the inertia and alpha. And so notice they give us all these rotational kinematic variables, meaning with these, we should be able to solve for alpha. And if we can plug it in, multiply by the inertia, right, which we're given, we can solve for the torque required, right? So that's just the way I think about it. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So how do we solve for alpha, right? Because we have inertia. How do we solve for alpha given these variables? So we have um, omega time and omega zero. So the formula that pops out to me is just omega equals omega zero plus alpha times t, right? And you guys should know this. Uh, Right, so these are just the rotational kinematic equations. They're very similar to the normal kinematic, except for instead of like velocity, you have omega, which is the angular, instead of alpha, or in this one you have alpha, which is angular acceleration, instead of just normal acceleration. So they're really just the same, right? This is just the same as v equals v sub zero plus a times t, except for they're just rotational. But yeah, so notice here, if we plug in all the va uh, variables, we can solve for alpha, and then plugging it in, we can solve for the torque. So let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, but before we do that, notice how this is in radians per second, this is in seconds, but this is in revolutions per minute. And if we want all of them to have the same units, this has to be in radians per second. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So let's convert it. So, and when you, when, generally I just always assume it's in radians per second. So when something is zero, uh, just assume it's in radians per second. So we have 400 revolutions per minute and we want it in radians per second. So we know for every one minute, there's going to be 60 seconds, right? And that's going to cancel out the minutes, give it to us in seconds. And then for the revolution, uh, we know that there's one revolution is the same as two pi radians. Or if you don't know that, you should know that by now. But essentially, two pi radians is equal to one revolution, meaning we can just multiply by two pi to cancel out the revolutions. And then now if you look at this, we have radians over seconds, which is exactly what we want, right? So you're just going to do 400, divide that by 60, right? And then multiply by two pi. So if you go ahead and do this, you'll get 41.8879, right? And the units are going to be radians per second. So let's just write that down, radians per second. Cool, so now we have it in the correct units and we can actually plug it in. So omega is going to be 41.8879 equals omega zero. And so omega zero is just zero, right? So we don't need to write that. Plus alpha, which is what we're solving for, multiplied by the time, which is eight seconds. If we divide both sides by eight, right? So divide by eight, so you just do 41.8879, divide that by eight. You're going to get alpha is equal to... Let me plug it in. So just do 41.8879 divided by 8. 5.2359 and so on. I'll just leave it like this. So 5.2359. And then what you're going to want to do is, this is alpha, right? And the units are radians per second squared. Because notice this was radians per second. And then we're dividing by seconds. So the second's going to become squared. So now we have alpha. We have I. And we can solve for the torque. So torque is equal to inertia, which is 1.6 multiplied by alpha, which is 5.2359, uh, right? Yeah, so what you're going to want to do is go ahead and plug this in your calculator. So go ahead and do this. So 1.6 times 5.2359. Yeah, so go ahead and do this. Uh, you're going to get 8.37744. Yeah, so uh, keep in mind the units too. This is in uh, kilogram meters squared, and then this is in radians per second. 
And so it's going to be Newton meters. That's what we measure torque in. So uh, 8.37744 uh, Newton meters. That's going to be the torque. Uh, but yeah, so this is going to be your answer. Uh, and hopefully you found this useful.